All right, now we're going to do is talk about another technique in which we can cool off the, the steam in a steam power plant. And the technique is called evaporative cooling. And now let's, let's take a look at, our, at a steam power plant, like a nuclear reactor. And you've all, we've all seen towers like this. This is, a, this is an evaporative cooler. And this process is exactly equal to the way your skin works and sweat. So when you're, when, you have, when you're warm and you want to cool off, your body sweats and that, that water is able to leave your body and go into the air. The air can hold, it can suspend water particles or vapor. And the warmer the air, the more water it can hold. So uh, if you've ever been to a, a really muggy area and you're just dripping wet, What's happening is the humidity is very, very high. So let's say you're at a you're in the you're in Houston and it's 90 degrees out and the relative humidity is 95. There's just it's it's hot, so your body wants to reject heat, and there's just no way there's no room for the um, for the there's no room for the vapor that wants to come off your skin to go because it's almost saturated. It's almost holding all the water it can. So. A lot of people say that it's not the heat, but it's the humidity. And if you've ever stepped out of a um, of a uh, shower and you're freezing to death, what's happening is all the moisture on your skin is evaporating and uh, pulling the heat off your skin. And until you dry yourself off, you're going to be freezing. So um, in in the area of um, water vapor and evaporative cooling, we have two terms that I, I would like to de define before I go into how the, this, this cooling system will work on, the, on our steam power plant, plant. So this is relative humidity, and I kind of covered that where I said that we were at 95% um, um, relative humidity, but let's assume that we're, we're just at 80 degrees and our relative humidity is 42, which is 45 is a really feels really good to humans. So 80 degrees, 42 percent relative humidity, which means this air at this point is holding 42 percent of the water that it can hold. Now there's a, a cousin to relative humidity, which is dew point. And as I said, colder air cannot hold as much water. So it, at night, if this if you're out there in a nice day, 42 degrees relative humidity, everything feels good. If the air temperature drops to 60 degrees, the, the relative humidity will hit 100, and if it drops any more, the water in the air will have to drop off and go onto the cars and the, and the lawn. So you, when you hit the dew point, you simply just drop your temperature until you've hit 100% relative humidity, there's nowhere to go and it falls on the earth. So this is a, a major component in mechanical engineering because we can use this for for cooling in our water tower. Now, in nuclear power plants, the reason you see those towers is often there are regulations by the state that you cannot heat the water because the fish are spawning. So what they do is they, they make this tower and they put fans up here, air fans, and th those fans are blowing upward and they're, that's sucking air into the bottom of it. And there's a waterfall. There's, there's inside it's just a maze of you want to get a massive amount of surface area and you pump water you pump water into here and this water let's say it comes from a lake so you you take water from the lake and you put it on the top of this waterfall it's falling down and then down at the bottom you have a reservoir and you're bringing water from this reservoir and you're just looping it over and over and the lake is going down. You're actually taking water out of the lake and it's going out the top in vapor and this, this keeps this pile of water cool, this, this reservoir at the bottom. And then we can take our power plant, which we've drawn a million times, and we can do heat exchange with this. So this is our condenser from our closed loop power plant and we can exchange heat with this tank which is being cooled by the evaporation of the lake water. This is a cool tank and then we can cool off our 
um, let's say our, our solar thermal plant. And the reason that solar thermal plants um, will do great in the desert with evaporative cooling is that it's very dry in the desert. And the word dry simply means the relative humidity is low. Low relative humidity. Which means probably only 10, probably only 10. There's, there's just no water in the desert and there's no water for it to be, for, for the air to be saturated. So you have a really fantastic way to pump a lot of, to, to evaporate a lot of water into the air in the desert. So here we are, steam thermal power plant in the desert. We've got to find an aquifer or some aqueduct coming down the California, um, down the, from Northern California, Southern California. Some, some source of water um, on the Kramer Junction um, solar thermal plant that's in place right now, they use Palmdale septic, the, the sewer treatment. So they're, Palmdale is actually giving them the water and they're, they're taking the water but they're not heating it up. So you have the, the, the water falling down a waterfall, air being sucked up, creating a chimney effect, and that, that vapor going off is cooling this, the water that's falling down, which is falling into this reservoir, heat exchange with the steam power plant, evaporative cooling, in the desert and it works because we have low relative humidity. Okay, that's a fantastic way to run a steam power plant in the desert. Later.